Today, regulars Matt Kelly, Jonathan Armstrong, and Tom Fox are joined by Karen Moore and Christy Grant Hart. But we are now going to move on to fan favorites, shout outs, and rants. So we're going to start with Matt, then go back across the pond to Jonathan, then over to Christy, Karen, and I will bat number five today. Matt, what you got for us? Yeah, I want to give a, uh, I suppose this qualifies as a rant to the now former Speaker of the U.S. House, Kevin McCarthy, (laughs) who was a terrible person, terrible politician, terrible leader of his party, and got exactly what he deserved. Uh, When they deposed him in what was probably the stupidest cell phone I have ever seen in U.S. politics, which says a lot in this country. Uh, But what Mr. McCarthy, I think, failed to ever see is that in some alternative universe, when he became speaker uh, at the beginning of the year, that other Kevin McCarthy took a more moderate and conciliatory approach did get some uh, Democrats to come over to his side from time to time could have pursued more moderate policies and pushed them through on a bipartisan basis, which last time I checked is exactly what this country is calling for its politicians to do. And in that parallel universe, I bet that Kevin McCarthy, A, still has his job, and B, is probably one of the most effective and popular politicians over there, because we have no effective politicians who are not at all popular pretty much anywhere in this country right now. But I just single singularly want to call out McCarthy that his fundamental problem is he only believes Republicans should only negotiate with other Republicans. And that's how he was going to keep his job here in the real world. There are people in this country and in Congress who are not Republicans and you can't just ignore them. You can't think because they're not Republicans, they don't have some claim to participate in governance. Yes, they do. And he really should have fought much more smartly and strategically he could have outflanked this dimwit nutball, Matt Gates, who I can't believe that Gates is the smart master strategist here who outboxed him. That is a sad commentary. But ultimately, look, Kevin McCarthy sold his soul for power and now is surprised that he has wound up in hell. And I have zero sympathy for somebody like that. Mr. Armstrong. Yeah, I don't think I can get as ranty as Matt today. I was going to uh, shout out to Courtney Nordrum. I was privilege to speak with her at SCCE yesterday and I thought it was an incredibly brave thing to do to talk about the ransomware attack that she handled on her corporation. She It was a warts and all account including the uh, emotional issues involved with handling that type of attack and from my experience it's very rare i think i only know of one other corporation that's had a warts and all real-time discussion of the attack they faced and unless we discuss these things in public then we don't know how horrific they are and if we don't know how horrific they are then we don't prepare properly and if we don't prepare properly the bad guys win. So it was a, in my view, I know I'm biased. We were fortunate to be on the team that helped minimize the the parts of the attack that could be minimized. I know I'm biased in this, but I thought it was an incredibly brave presentation and one that was very much for the public good. Christy, what do you have for us today? Something not compliance related to rave about. I recently began, one of my friends linked to a video of something called Don't Be a Lawyer. Has anyone seen this from my crazy ex-girlfriend? It is a singing, dancing reason to not be a lawyer because it's a horrible life. And it's amazingly funny. It's got a full like dance cast and dance grooves. And it is from my crazy ex-girlfriend, which is a program I didn't watch when it was out. But it turns out there's a musical number in every single episode. So I am living my musical theater best fantasy because it's that. And it takes place in the law firm. It is magic all over the place. See my crazy ex-girlfriend. And before you do that, please look for Don't Be a Lawyer from my crazy ex-girlfriend. You will laugh for days. Well, Karen, you've had some time to repair. What do you have for us? Yes, I'm going to just maybe build on that theme, but maybe rant uh, a little bit on the law firm. I love being a lawyer, by the way. I think it's a great profession, has great opportunities, but sometimes gets taken advantage of. So my my 
grant is on big law partners charging upwards of $1,000 an hour for their advice, valuable as it is. Jonathan, you're worth any penny anybody would be able to pay. But still, last spring, Reuters reported that in the Johnson & Johnson subsidiary Chapter 11 case, the U.S. trustee actually appealed to court asking the federal bankruptcy judge in New York to block LTL from retaining a Hogan and Lovells partner, citing his absolutely egregious $2,465 an hour rate, significantly higher than already high rates in the seven other law firms already involved in the case, which range from Let's see, I think it's Skadden Arps at $1,100 an hour and Ora Carrington at $1,750. And at the same time, at the beginning of this year, the median base salary for first-year associates who are basically useless in big law firms was $200,000 a year, according to the NAL. 2023 Associate Salary Survey, up 35000 from last year. And I guess that's at least good news for my nephew, Max, who's in his second year at Georgetown Law, and he's going to be able to support us all. I'm telling you, there's a line in in that song that says, you can spend four years of your life helping one pharmaceutical company merge with another pharmaceutical company. Now, see, you're going to go look at it now, right? Because that's actually... There you go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a dual shout out. Major League Baseball playoffs are here. They have already started. We have already seen... uh, First of all, playoff baseball is absolutely great. We have already seen some fabulous plays. Carlos Correa made one of the great defensive plays I have ever seen. Uh, in the Twins game against the Blue Jays, Vladdy Guerrero Jr. got picked off on second on an absolutely inane play. And, of course, the world champion Houston Astros start their defense of their championship. So I'm going to be glued to playoff baseball at least as long as the Astros are in. And also I want to shout out to Dick Buckus. Dick Buckus died this week. He was the absolute prototype middle linebacker. In the 60s and early 70s, he completely revolutionized the position. He was about, uh, in all the NFL, if there could be a meanest, he was it. So I don't know what you're doing in heaven, Dick Butkus, but I'm sure you're looking for somebody to hit. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, this has been an absolutely great Everything Compliance. I hope we can get the gang back together. And thanks for all our guests who commented. So till next time, guys, thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thank Thank you. This is Tom Fox again. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Everything Compliance, Shoutouts and Rants. If you've enjoyed this episode, I hope you'll subscribe, rate, and review wherever great podcasts are listened to. Everything Compliance, Shoutouts and Rants is a special production of the Compliance Podcast Network.